Javier Malay is a frank talking maverick. Zurdos hijos de puta tiemblen. La libertad avanza. Viva la libertad, carajo! Who isn't afraid to say what he's really thinking. Es decir, usa Dios, o sea, vos no podés negociar con el zurdo. No se negocia. No se negocia con esa mierda, no se negocia porque te van a llevar puesto. He surged in popularity with his anti-socialism rhetoric during a time of upheaval in Argentina. El socialismo es siempre y en todo lugar un fenómeno violento, asesino y empobrecedor. Esa es la característica del socialismo. And campaigned on a promise to shake things up. Adoctrinamiento. Afuera. Ministerio de Transporte. Afuera. Ministerio de Salud. Afuera. Ministerio de Desarrollo Social. Afuera. Se acabó el curro de la política. ¡Viva la libertad, carajo! Javier Malay will now become Argentina's next president after claiming victory in the contentious election. But who exactly is the man being described as the Donald Trump of Argentina? And how will he go entering the political fray? Sky News Digital Originals presents Who is Javier Malay? Argentina is facing a myriad of issues. In the throes of recession, it battles an eye-watering inflation rate of 142.7%, a stark contrast to the US at 3.24% and Australia at 5.4%. This isn't the first time Argentina has danced with economic disaster. Three sovereign debt defaults since 2000 bear witness to a troubled financial history. Fast forward to today and the country finds itself in the clutches of one of the most severe economic crises in two decades. The economic crisis is hitting the population hard, with one in ten Argentinians now living in poverty. The Argentine peso is taking a nosedive, plummeting more than 90% against the almighty US dollar. Desperate times call for drastic measures. Q. Javier Malay, the unyielding libertarian, storming onto the scene, elected president on a radical mandate for change. He is um, an outsider. I mean, three years ago, nobody in Argentina had heard of him. He has won the presidency with that campaign, some of which you showed, uh, of being a channel for the immense anger and frustration that Argentines feel because um, for the last 10 years, there's been no economic growth. Inflation, as you mentioned, is what's heading for 200% this year. There are, uh, the central bank has no reserves. Um, the government deficit is very large. It's financed by just printing pesos, and thus the value of the peso goes down. Uh, people, Many people were very fed up with the ruling Peronists, who have been there for most of the past 20 years and have a powerful machine, but they really have no policies to get the country going again. Now, the big question is, can Millet actually deliver a serious economic reform? He got a very large popular mandate in the vote, but he has his party is very small. He doesn't have a majority in the Congress. And um, you showed that, you know, there are questions about how stable a personality he has and how <laughs> effective he will be at doing the negotiations he will have to do if, he's, if he is to govern. He has won decisively. They're sending shockwaves around the world, 55 to 44. That's a decisive victory. He won his primary a couple months ago with similar margins. He's a political outsider, 54 years old, um, was a, a musician, a soccer player, all sorts of things, a TV personality, and then uh, a classical libertarian who kind of came out of nowhere and did this. And why is this capturing the world's attention? Because Argentina is a cautionary tale of a once prosperous society mm -hmm. that can go down so quickly. Buenos Aires was one of the richest cities in the world less than a century ago. They infamously defaulted on their debt 20 years ago. They got hyperinflation, 140, 50%. Wow. We don't like it at 7% over here, think about that. 40% of their population is below the poverty line. You put that together and it's kind of like, what do you have to lose? And this outsider comes in like a wrecking ball and wow. uh, it's gonna be very interesting to watch. So Argentina is very different from most Western nations. You know, it's got 140% inflation and 40% of its population living in poverty. But I do think you can list it, you can link it to trends in the West. What has happened here is the Argentine electorate has said that politics as usual is no good anymore. It's just not working. Centre left and centre right 
and they've got the same problems as Western governments have, but they've got them in a much more advanced degree. Massive government deficit, inability to uh, run coherent economic policy, tax policy out of control, people not paying their taxes and so on. And so electorates which are absolutely fed up with centre-right and centre-left look for um, alternatives on the far right or the far left. I wouldn't quite necessarily describe this guy as far right. He's not a he's not a kind of a Nazi or authoritarian or something. He's a new breed. He's a libertarian. So he wants radical economic change. He wants a big cut to the size of the Argentine state. He wants to abolish the local currency and dollarize the economy so that it has to live genuinely within its means. I mean, a dollarized economy, making the US dollar the official currency of Argentina is very tough medicine for Argentina, but it, it does force you to live really within your means. So I think it's a fascinating development and he's going to have a lot of trouble governing because he doesn't have parliamentary majority or anything like that. You might get a lot of conflict in Argentina, but the election of Trump, the election of Bolsonaro in Brazil, the Brexit vote, these are all signs of electorates saying we're fed up with politics as usual and, um, you know, the alternatives they choose can be quite radical. The, the solutions put forward by Millet are quite radical and he has compromised them between the first and second round, which is what enabled him to win because it meant that the established opposition, the former president, um, um, Mauricio Macri, and Patricia Bullrich that ran in the first round put their support behind him, which is how he was able to have a victory. Um, so he has compromised on some of those now infamous statements about, you know, he's now fixing the central bank, not disbanding it and not getting rid of it. Um, so we, we have seen some change in, in the tone, especially in his, his acceptance speech. Um, but I, I, th I think the main point to point out is this is not this vote for an anti um, outsider, anti-establishment candidate in Argentina is not Argentine voters didn't vote for his policies or for him. It's an anti peronist vote and it's a anti-government protest vote. It doesn't necessarily mean that the people who voted for him um, endorse the policies that, that, that he's been spouting on during his campaign. It means that more and more people are rallying around the outsiders, which Trump always was. I mean, mm. when he became president, people didn't know all that much about him, except that he was a, a, a rich guy and... Celebrity um, apprentice. apprentice. Exactly. You're fired. Um, and that was about it, right? But it meant that the institution had failed to get their guy mm. up. And that outsider achieved more during his term than any other president before him, as far as I'm concerned, especially in terms of foreign policy and didn't the world go to hell once the Biden administration unpicked all of that. But I just love this because at his core, when you watch his clips, this is a man who loves his country. Yep. He yeah. loves his people <clears throat> and, he and he doesn't give a flying rip about the haters. That's how he reflects Trump. And whether people like it or lump it, the world needs these kinds of leaders right now because we are up against a visceral socialist contingent that is trying to push its agenda throughout particularly the Western world and it's only leaders like this that the media flip out about as well because they're like, we can't control him. He's out of control and he does not care. And you'd be mistaken to look at those clips of him behaving in a crazy fashion, which allows him to break through with a media that is completely against him. Mm. But you'd be mistaken to think that that's who he is when you listen to him speaking seriously. Mm. I mean, he says things that mm. other Western leaders should be saying but are too afraid to say. He says the government generally causes more problems than it solves. He says social justice relies on two things, the approval of theft and the approval of inequality before the law. He says that we're in the middle of a culture war and he says socialists do not let up because they're leeches who want to get everything for free, therefore you've got mm. to fight them every single day. Mm. And then faced with death threats and asked, is he worried about his own safety? I love what he said. He said, life without freedom is not worth living. Quite yeah. right, quite right. And see, this is like the whole erratic thing, right? Part of what made Trump successful was that you didn't know what he was going to do. Like, that, that the perceived erratic nature of Donald Trump meant people were scared of him. I yep. mean, could you think of anyone else who could have uh, got uh, North Korea 
for heaven's sake, to, to come and sit down, Kim Jong-un, to, to sit down for a meeting because they were so scared that Trump might actually do something. And you see shades of that in this bloke. If only we could get rid of uh, Albo the Trot, as uh, our good friend Bronwyn Bishop calls him, and, uh, <laughs> and get him over here. And hopefully this is a sign of uh, a wave to come across the world. So this guy, Javier, Javier Malay, is fascinating. Just a quick Google search tells me that he openly says he loves tantric sex, that he is a big promoter of threesomes, <laughs> that he thinks he can speak to his dead dog via telepathy and is not embarrassed to admit it, that he had his dogs cloned and um, they're running around, I guess, advising him in the, in the for life as well as the after. <laughs> he wants to get rid of virtually all of Argentina's government. And uh, the people support this because they have 110% inflation in Argentina. It's a hot mess down there. So they are ready for a revolution. And, you know, we've seen this in place after place, not only the United States with Trump, but um, the UK had its had its period with Brexit. They've sort of calmed down and gone more traditionalist as of late. Um, now Argentina, the, the people are rising up against these so-called elites. And the more in your face these candidates are, the more beloved they become with the base. This guy, I mean, I'm sure you've seen some of the clips, but he, he's out there saying, you can't give, quote, libtards even an inch, not an inch. Uh, the rhetoric is colorful. Uh, it's it's um, entertaining. I wouldn't say it's uh, unifying. It's definitely very divisive. But, you know, their country, like, like ours, is kind of in a fighting mood and not in the mood to be offended by this lowbrow mudslinging, rather in the mood to join in it. It feels cathartic, and it feels for many like it's about time. So... I can't wait to see what he does. I am sure it's going to be very controversial, but you know, as Trump once put it, hey, what do you have to lose? They're embarking on a radical experiment. Um, I don't think even people who voted for it really know um, what's gonna happen in the next coming days, but the euphoria and excitement on those streets is, um, uh, Argentines are really resilient. Uh, they've been through crisis after crisis um, and military dictatorships. The, the Peronists have governed the last 28 or 40 years of democracy since they re-democratized. Um, and, and things are just up and down. It's constant volatility. Um, Argentina also has the youngest voting age, which is 16, and it's predominantly young voters who, who didn't live the dictatorship and don't have that memory that their grandparents and parents have that, that really want to change. And I think Argentines... Um, they, it, it, it's, it marks the end of Peronist populism. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, it, when we compare it to Trump and Bolsonaro, you know, people, it's as if this is the first time populism has happened in Argentina. Populism was created in Argentina, um, and, and that's where it originally came from in theory in the, 19, the 1940s. So, but that populism has always been Peronism. It's a really large state. It's very bureaucratic. Um, and there's high levels of corruption and Argentines, the, the opposition failed to produce a candidate, um, the established opposition. Um, and so we have a completely outsider anti-establishment candidate, um, libertarian, who's talking about the 19th century and returning Argentina back to its former glory. I think he's clearly a very effective communicator. And, you know, communicators in this world today tend uh, to do quite well. But, you know, I would repeat, it's one thing to, to get to the president, it's another thing to govern quite a large country, right, and a complicated country. And he's not stupid. I mean, he's an economist. He's, he hasn't been a kind of particularly prominent economist. He worked in the private sector for quite a long time. The, the, what we don't know, and there are lots of things that we don't know about him, we don't know how good he will be at building a team, at delegating, letting bright people get on with the job, no? The president-elect is wasting no time flexing his global influence. Malay is demanding the return of the Falkland Islands, but UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is firmly rejecting any talks on sovereignty. Initially, there was the threat of, is this Nutter going to try to go to war with us? And there is that polite reminder to this chap that 
you know, we did send the Argentinians packing not so long ago at the cost of around 250 British service personnel and around 690, I think it was, uh, Argentinians. He has said that he wants to try to reclaim it through diplomatic means. Well, the people of the Falkland Islands have spoken. And in 2013, they had a referendum there on a turnout of 92%, 99.8% voted to remain British. In fact, just three people decided that they wanted uh, the Falklands to not remain British. So from a diplomatic perspective, that's where we are. Grant Chaps, our Defence Secretary, has seen fit to send a warship back to the Falklands just in case. I, I do think that Javier Malay has got yeah. his hands tied, really, because you can't really say to the Argentinian people that you don't want them back. But look, I suppose the message from the Brits is back off their arse. Javier Malay steps into Argentina's top role at a crucial juncture, facing unprecedented challenges. Is he ready for the daunting task ahead? Only time will tell. I think there's no doubt that the Argentine state is too big and too inefficient, right? And that the private sector is weighed down with a lot of controls and regulations and so on. Yeah? I mean, I think there's an important point in what you're, you're hinting at, right? In that, um, I mean, some of his proposals are um, frankly uh, not operable. No? I mean, dollarizing a country, adopting the dollar as the currency in a country where one of the chronic problems has been lack of dollars. It's just not going to happen, right? <laughs> Abolishing the central bank is 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 um, mm. is um, not a good idea. You need a proper central bank that does the job properly, right? Um, uh, but what he has shown over the last month, since the first round of the presidential election, is that to the extent that he needed allies, he's been he's shown that he will be flexible on policy questions. Um, and there is a core of truth or the right thing to do in, in what he's saying. I mean, Argentina does need a smaller and more effective state. It needs to cut public spending. It needs to get the economy growing. It needs well. the central bank to behave as a proper central bank. I'm not going to do the pessimistic um, version. I, I don't think he's Trump because Trump was an outside candidate within an established party, the Republican Party, with a lot of power. This candidate cannot govern without the support of Congress. And his legislative base, which he doesn't have, is established politicians and, and, and people with a lot of intelligence and technocrats. And so we're all waiting to see who he nominates in his cabinet. But I would think that his cabinet will be people who have established reputations and records. And I think Argentine institutions like the legislator and, and it is strong enough that um, I don't think he will he won't have the free reign that, that some of the international news is predicting.